Well, late last night, the Chicago Bears signed their veteran edge in Yannick Ngakwe. We're going to talk about the reasons why this is a good deal for the Chicago Bears and why there are still some causes for concern. But they followed that signing up with signing Mercedes Lewis at the tight end position. We're going to talk about both those signings, plus dive into the mailbag right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central. Your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. I'm the host here, Hayes. You guys can follow the channel right off the top at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the content for today. So the Bears have signed tight end Marcetis uh, Lewis uh, to their roster now. Uh, this is a, a veteran. He's been in the NFL since 2000. And 16, where he was drafted 28th overall in that draft, and he has been in the league for 18 years. So the Bears are bringing in a veteran presence there, who's been more of a of, of a blocker in the, in the blocking game. He at one point in this time, especially in Jacksonville, he was more of a, more utilized in that wide receiver. Uh, uh, well, in the receiving part of the game, in the passing game, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, and but since then, he's been he stayed on. He's been a veteran blocker, uh, those type of things, and in, in in there playing uh, a little special teams as well. Um, and you know, I don't expect this to be any type of huge signing at all when you look at the Chicago Bears bringing him in. But it it is one that made sense. It's actually one that was rumor, rumored um earlier into the season as well. So you know, when you look at him, he has a history with a couple of Bears coaches. Uh, he he's he's there. He has a connection with Luke Getzey playing with him uh before, and then also. The uh, assistant tight end coach in Tim Zett, he's played under him before. So there are enough connections uh, there dating back to the time in Green Bay that it made sense for Mercedes Lewis to come in here. He's going to join the tight end room with Robert Tanyan, Cole Komet. Um, and, you know, it, it is what it is. We'll see what happens. We'll see how how he's used. But with Cole Komet, Robert Tanyan, as long as they stay healthy, I don't really expect us to see a lot of Mercedes Lewis. Like I said, outside of some specialty lineups, things like that, to come in as a depth piece, uh, he'll be used as that. But he's not going to be play any type of hu- huge role, I would think, for the Chicago Bears. That's my personal opinion, but hey, you never know. I've been surprised by things before. But hey, Bears just made a signing. I wanted to make sure that we announced that and talked about that. But it all went down last night. One of the biggest speculation points that we've had and questions that we had on what the Bears were going to do, were they going to add a veteran edge? We got the answer to that last night when it was announced that the Bears signed Yannick Ngakwe to a $10.5 million one-year deal, only for one year to come and play one year, one year to come and play for the Chicago Bears. And the reasons why this deal is, is right, right? A, we had the money, right? We had the cap space. That's the biggest thing to get experimental. We know that Ryan Poles was hesitant to attach any type of long-term money, especially to a player that, you know, is 28 years old, which not old in life at any stretch of the imagination. Let me be, make make it clear on that. Hell, it's younger than me. Uh, so, but not old, but still a player that doesn't, isn't necessarily going, may not factor into the, the long-term future of the Chicago Bears, right? They come in now, they get a player at, at, or one of the one-year prove-it deals that has just every year of his career, the bare minimum, is you can expect from him, he's going to get you eight sacks, at least eight sacks in every single year of his NFL career. Last year, nine and a half sacks. The season prior to that, uh, he had 10 sacks. And then the season prior to that, you know, he, he still, like, he is going to get you sacks. That's it. He's going to come in. He's going to, he's going to sack the quarterback. And that's just what it is. This is a guy who's going to, who comes in at a position of need that brings the needed skill set, right? And so, you know, and there's enough to think that maybe this team is going to be good enough in the run running game with the rest of the defensive linemen, who, yeah, we've heard really good things about, but as well as that linebacking core, I think we're going to be okay in the running game. And maybe that's the conversation that Matt Eberflus and Ryan Poles had, is that, yes, Yannick Ngakwe has his own issues. That the, the Is he going to play play and compete every single down, right? Um, the, the issues in the running game that he does have, that is a legit, you know, cause for concern with him. If this Bears team feels like they're strong enough to withstand his limitations on the field, it makes sense that after uh, uh, two weeks of training camp, basically seven days of training camp, they sat there, they evaluated in their day off, and they went ahead and decided to pull that trigger. This, like I said, this is a this is a no a, a, a low risk deal for the Chicago Bears. It's ten and a half million dollars for one year for a player that's a veteran who comes in, who you expect to at least bring able to b- bring the thing that you want, and maybe you've had. You, you, you've had the conversations on if your culture can take it. That's one of the biggest things. His attitude, him as a teammate, right, is that 
considering the culture that Chicago Bears are building, do they feel that they already have now the culture to kind of withstand that? I think they do. I think what we've even seen in training camp and heard from training camp from these players, it, 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 it's it well within the realm of possibility that the culture that we've built here is strong enough to where they feel that Yannick Ngakwe, a player that is coming in, trying to prove it, going to try to get another long-term, will get a long-term deal next offseason, whether it be with the Bears or any other team, that he's now you know at that level where they think, hey, we're good culture-wise. We have a coach. We have players that aren't going to allow the bullshit to come into this locker room. And so Yannick Ngakwe comes in. He brings what we need. Uh, and, and let's not make no mistake about it. Yes, he is not nearly as good in the in the in the running game as he is in the passing game. But but there's enough there to think that we're going to be okay with, with even with that, right? And so this also puts kind of everybody back in a more natural position. Travis Gepson, who is is still trying to get that long term contract and prove what he can be, he's now going to come into a defensive line that is going to have a player that. They're going to have to double team Yannick Ngakwe, which when when tra- when Travis Gibson is out there, it opens up even more opportunity for him. Javon Dexter, right? Zach Pickens, Billings, Justin Justin Jones in that interior defensive line, and if they're bringing the pressure like they could, Travis Gibson could benefit a lot from this. Demarcus Walker also is going to benefit a lot from this, right? And then Dominique Robinson may end up being the odd man out. We'll see what, especially with Terrell Lewis, right? But I think now that the Bears have done enough on that defensive line. I've said it. One of the biggest questions that we still had left was just that defensive line. I think now with the uh, with the addition of Yannick Ngakwe to what we've already heard, how this defensive line is developing. Yes, we need to see it actually happen in games. I think that we've shored up that now as well. The monsters of the midway are very well on their way back, at least on paper. The team is going to come to fruition in real life, but. Overall, super excited, stoked about this signing. I think this was the, the, the signing that made the most sense for the Chicago Bears. And they may not be done. They may not be done as we continue to go through training camp. And especially, you don't know, I don't expect the injury to Demarcus Walker to be anything serious. I haven't heard any rumblings or things like that. Yes, concern from you guys. But I think, this, I think I, yeah, do, just do not be surprised if, if there still aren't some tweaks made to the roster as well going forward in the rest of training camp. But okay. Enough of me talking about the signings. It's Friday. It's mailbag day, which means we got to get into your voicemails. We've got five voicemails today. We're going to play the first one. This one's from Book. Yo, yo, yo. Hey, what's up? This is Book, man. Happy Friday. Be doing yours. I had I called in for a whole different reason, but scratch all that, man. Hey, Yannick Ngakwe, man. We finally got that pass rush that everybody said that we don't have, even though that defense is looking good. All this does, man, is just, Make that line better. The Bears defense is going to be killing folks. Folks don't really understand what this means. They already on a trajectory of pointing up. Adding this man takes him to another level. It's going to take Walker to another level. It's going to take Green to another level. It's going to take the secondary to another level. Folks don't get it. Man, we are starting to become a complete team. As soon as Justin takes that step, and it's been one for the league. But that's all I wanted to say, man. Again, happy Friday. Chicago up. Bear down. Have a blessed weekend, man. And I, I agree with everything that you said there, Book. I think, you know, bringing in Yannick and Gagwin, one of the things that I didn't talk about in the opening segment as well is it's still going to up this situation for the defense, the offensive lineman that we have, right? You now get to practice against somebody who is going to try to – who's one of the better uh, pass-rushing edges in the league, right? One of the most – one of the most consistent, I think, is the better way to put it. Uh, pass rushing edges in the league, and so that's going to help our offensive line. That's going to up that standard in practice as well. And uh, I think everybody's going to benefit from it. I think uh, Justin Fields is going to benefit from it as well in practice that he's going to have and in preparing for the other teams that can simulate a lot of things in practices. This signing was made at the right time as well. I think when you look at signing him, with still a week now uh, before we play our first preseason game, or eight days before we play our first preseason game, I think you're bringing him in now with enough time to really get in the system, which he's already familiar with the system anyway, right? He hasn't played for Matt Eberflus before, but he's played in Matt Eberflus's system. And I think that's going to be the thing that benefits, that helps him hit the ground running as one of my lights goes out, hit the ground running and really being able to perform the way the Chicago Bears need him to right away. So that's my thought on that one. Let's get into this next one. This one's from Barry. Hey, Bobby C. Dog, Barry here. It's early in the morning, but I am jet pumped. King Poles does it again. This guy can't miss. We got our edge rusher. 
I'm not going to lie to you, dude. I was, I was getting sweaty before the season. I'm like, all right, I, the Bears don't have that premier edge rusher. I was about ready to sign Lizzo at this point. Anybody that can step in and get some pressure on the quarterback. And Jordan Love, Weasel, if you're listening to this, you can't run and you sure as shit can't hide. We're coming for your ass week one, September 10th. Put it on the calendar. And how good does it feel to have a competent front office? Ryan Poles is surgical. The guy doesn't miss. And compare that with Ryan Pace. He would have given up what you guys said last night. Three years, $42 million. That guy just couldn't, he couldn't hold on to assets. He thought all this money and all these draft picks are burning a hole in his pocket. We got Ryan Poles stacking on my like Pokemon cards. The guy can't miss. And that, that Ryan Poles, uh, Pace, sorry, that guy spent more time quaffing his hairdo and spending all the time looking spicy than he did recruiting players. I mean, that guy, he, he, you know, Ryan Poles, buzz cut. He says, I ain't got time for haircuts. Something simple, square it up. And then while he's getting his haircut, he's got his iPad out. He's watching prospects. That's what that guy's doing. It is, feels so good to have this set in stone now. Week one, we're ready to rock. Barring any injuries, the future is looking bright, fellas. So I want to hear what you have to say. Chicago up and bear the fuck down. Poles gets it done again. First of all, Barry's hilarious. Yeah, like, Barry needs to take his – he needs to go on a stand-up comedy tour. Uh, but, yeah, uh, uh, Poles gets his edge. He makes it happen again. Uh, Money-making Poles, man. Uh, or, I don't – Willin and Dylan Poles? I don't know. Like, whoa, Willin and Dylan Poles sounds like the name of a male brothel. But nonetheless, um, I do think that uh, – that, look, Poles is always in evaluation mode, and that's what is the difference between this era of Chicago Bears and the era that we had before. Poles really has a plan, and he has some parameters he needs to hit, but he is not afraid to go out and get guys that he truly feels is going to help improve this football team. That just is what it is. He's not afraid to go out and make the moves that are necessary. Now, he's going to do it in his way, right? Because I'm sure that Yannick Ngakwe, who's talked about winning long-term security and to play for a contender, I I'm sure that there were some things said at that deal. But he went out and he got his guy at a good price, and I think he's going to definitely help this team to continue this team. And as far as that weasel out there in Green Bay, listen, hearing him struggle has been one of the best things, but I'm going to save that. we got a little bit on that uh, here in the next voicemail, which we're going to go ahead and play now. This one's from Fred. Hey, Zo, what's going on, man? What it do? This your boy, Fred, man. What's up with Bobby and C Dub, man, the cognac boys? Hey man, I'm I'm loving to know what's going on in camp. I ain't you know what I'm saying, like feel good this good since probably what, two thousand eighteen team. I can say that, but you know, like I am glad to see Fields making strides. Yeah, he's gonna throw picks, but that's part of learning. That's why we have practice, you know what I'm saying? I'm glad to see the defense stepping up, but they they saying Gibson, you know, kinda trying to make a buzz or whatever though, but shit, I already begin his ass pancake. Got a damn rookie down there right. So, I don't know, man. It, it ain't looking good for him, man. I won't be surprised if he do get cut. Because I see that boy Trey Lewis making a lot of noise as well, too. So, I'm just looking forward to the season start, man, because ain't nothing to watch on TV. I can't wa wait to watch the Bears game and, and talk shit to these Packers and whoever was hating on the Bears as well, though. So, I'm just glad to see, you know, to hear good things coming out of camp. You know, Justin Fields and the offense, they're going to be all right, man. They're going to have that. That uh, too many offense together though. So the defense you no know, looking good. I'm glad to see Bristol, you know, being that ball hawk safety. I knew he had been, you know, saying B. And I'm glad to see old Twinkle Toe Kyler Gordon, you know, stepping up. I guess I ain't going to be able to call him Twinkle Toe now because he said he's doing good at camp. But as far as like three Stevenson, I think three Stevenson gonna be okay though. I'm glad they got him lining up against DJ Moore because that all they're gonna do is make him better and, and uh, as a better corner and Terrell Smith. So. I will actually, honestly, I wouldn't even mind if the Bears you no know, started both rookie corners because Jalen just, I, I'm just over Jalen Johnson, man. And I don't think Jalen Johnson going to get that contract extension. Yeah, that's good. He came to camp. He ain't hold out. But I don't think he, I don't I don't think we signed him back, though, come the off season though. So once, you know what I'm saying, like things come together, they should be able to let Fields open up that playbook and get, you know, many players he want to call or whatever, though, instead of keeping, you know, the training wheels on him. Take the training wheels off him. And let him ride. He got the weapons. He feel confident and he feel secure. And another thing, hey, I want to know: Why is they letting Lucas Patrick get rep at guard when they not letting that boy J J J Tyree Carter get rep at guard? And they say, you know, he might be a nice guard or whatever. Though, like it makes sense. Like me personally, I say let him and Leatherwood get some reps at guard, and let Lucas Patrick weak ass get some reps at center because we signed him and gave him that money. 
and he hasn't really sold us nothing, though. So I think he should be a, an, another guy that should get cut, and we should let Doug Kramer, you know, get an opportunity because we draft him. We didn't get to see what Doug Kramer can do because he got hurt last season, though. So I'm just happy, you know what I'm saying, that football is almost here. At least we get a preseason game that come, uh, come on for Thursday, for Thursday night or whatever, though. So, man, let me know what you think about who's going to get cut, and holler at me, man. Uh, listen, um, I'm excited about a lot with this team. I think that when you look at yet yeah, the player Kyler Gordon, the player Jaquan Brisker, uh, Terrell Smith um, uh, coming in, Terrell Lewis, right, and Terrell Smith like uh, pushing Tyreek Stevenson for that 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 cornerback position, and you know I think that all that's right, and I and I ultimately think that what we're seeing from this team, especially the defense, is that this ain't about to be last year's Bears, and I think that that's a big thing. This is not about to be last year's Bears. When you look at how we started off the team as one of the more, I mean, the season, one of the more dis- disciplined defenses, I think that that shows very big for the Chicago Bears. And if we can get back to that on top of up, upping our talent level overall, man, I'm super excited about the season right there with you, Fred. I think that this is going to be a fun one. Um, I, I just, I, so much like Vellis Jones, I like that he's still making plays, right? Like, yeah, we heard the thing of his attitude and stuff like that. But what we've heard is that he's making some plays. Still has, has some drops for sure. But he's making some plays also. Um, you know, uh, to, uh, 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 Tyler Scott making plays and even, you know, breaking down Jalen Johnson on a play. Like, there's so much positive hearing about training camp. But here's what I'll say. Just to not be negative or negative Nancy or anything like that, let's just make sure that we kind of wait to get too excited until we actually see how this team performs when they're facing off against other teams. But let's get into this next voicemail. This one's from Coach C. What's up, boys? I've been listening for a while. This is Coach C. And I finally finally got fed up, and I got to call in, man. I'm so tired of hearing everybody talk about the Bears. I think we're missing a couple points. The first one, I agree with you, Hayes, 100% on Kendall Vildor. When I first watched him two years ago, he was the worst Bears defensive back I've ever seen in my life watching football. Last year, he got a little bit better. But it ain't hard to be a little bit better when he was already in the base, right? My guy that I grind an axe with with the Bears that got to get the hell off this roster is Lucas Patrick. He by far is the worst offensive lineman on the Bears last year. People give Sam Mustard hell. His best attribute was that he was available, right? Lucas Patrick, when he was available, he couldn't block nobody. He is on every D lineman's highlight tape. They just clubbing and ripping past him on every damn snap. Go back and watch the tape. When David Montgomery got hurt, when he got hurt and got his knee twisted up, it was Lucas Patrick who missed the block. This guy just club slammed his ass up out the way and um, got to the quarterback. David Montgomery got rolled up on because Patrick missed his block. Now, everybody talk about the competition at DB. I really don't think it's a Lewis and um, Stevenson thing. I think what it is because these Bears are weak. The Bears coaches are wickedly brilliant. What they're doing right now is finding out if they got not only one cornerback draft that can start, but if they got two, then what the hell they need Jalen Johnson for? He ain't about to get paid. He is not about to get paid if the Bears found out that he's drafted two quality starting cornerbacks, right? Last point I want to make. Ugh, damn it, that's the guy. I appreciate you guys. They come back to me. I'm going to give you guys a call, man. I love listening to your show. I want to add something to it, man. Shot town up like a six-piece from Heroes Fried Hard and bear down. So see. Lucas Patrick has to go. Here's what I'll say. As a depth piece, I'm not too worried about Lucas Patrick. Now, I do know that his cap is pretty high. Don't get me wrong. But, like, I think, A, Lucas Patrick was hurt a lot last season. Um, so, I think that plays a part as well. I'm not saying that he's, like, this great running, uh, this great um, an offensive lineman at all or anything like that. But I am saying that I think in the role that we're going to use him in, I think it's going to be a lot better. And I'm not even going to begin to compare him to Sam Musty Mustafer because the Mustafer was absolute, absolutely – atrocious and i can't even say that lucas patrick at his worst was going to be as nearly as bad as what sam mustafer was and then uh, looking up uh lucas patrick's contract it's 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 a cap hit of a little over one million dollars so you know i no lucas patrick i think for what he's paid what it's what what how we're going to use him this season hopefully if everybody stays healthy knock on wood there i'm not really too worried about the lucas patrick part of it i'm not too worried about it um but as far as jalen johnson get not getting paid I tell you what, you have two rookie cornerbacks fighting for that 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 second starting position. There is a world in which Ryan, we know what Ryan Poles is always about value, value, value. And if you have two rookies that are fighting for starting positions, and and your your second year man and Kyler Gordon is just is killing it right now, 
you, you, you may look at that and then say, hey, Jalen, depending on what you want, I don't know if we got that for you, right? I've never been one that says for sure that Jalen's going to return I, I, or that he's going to leave, but I do think that if both these rookies are, and, and Kyler Gordon, this maintains throughout the, the whole season, he could be a midseason move. He could be traded by midseason just to not even have to worry about it. Now, he's handling his contract situation way better than Roquan Smith, but I wouldn't be surprised. That's my thought process. You guys can let me know what you think down below. All right, let's get into this last one. This one's from Mike from PA. Yo, hey, it's your boy Mike from PA. <laughs> Big shout out to Bobby and Unc. Oh, my God, you guys were killing me when – when that dude called in about the Hercules dude up in Green Bay, and they're like, homie be eating dog biscuits. And Bobby is like, he's like got that comedic timing. He just, he's just like, man, he's just a weirdo. <laughs> I was dying. It was great. And I love it. I am promoting the total weaselness of the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. What happens when the weasel gets sacked? Pop goes the weasel. I'm going to be texting J-Mac because Jason McKee's on my timeline. I'm going to be like, yo, J-Mac, I don't want to get you in trouble. But, bro, if you could do the pop goes the weasel, if we sack that quarterback from the north on week one, oh, man, we'll go crazy. But, anyway, that's my deal. Um, on a more serious note, the running back issue – my thing is 34 sweetness, fam. I love Walter. 13 years. You think Walter lasts 13 years in Chicago nowadays? It breaks my heart. And I'm blaming the national media. Everything now, blah, blah, blah. It's the passing league. It's the passing. But then when we get in December, when we get in the playoff games, man, it's really important to run the ball. Can you run the ball in this? Can you run the ball in that? You know, and I don't know if the owner, I'm with Unk. I think the owners are behind this. You know, these guys, running backs, give their all. They take the biggest beating of anybody, and they're huge. Everybody says, how do you help a young quarterback? Good running game. Well, oh, they don't have any value. We can just get one the dime a dozen. It drives me freaking crazy anyway um gosh i wish people would start saying how important running backs are to the game of football and to every team anyway that's my two cents peace brother chicago up bear down and down. Burst. the weasel jordan love struggling in training camp i love to hear it i just love to hear it i'm petty yes and i love to hear it fuck the weasel um, Pop Goes the Weasel. I got to get that over to C-Dub. We got to get C-Dub to say Pop Goes the Weasel when we sack him for the first time. Definitely got to get that happen, especially if it's Yannick Ngakwe who gets to him as well. Now, as far as the running back issue in the NFL, everything kind of has its ebbs and flows, right? And I think that it's going to come back around. But when you have the, the talent that you do have coming into the running back position every single year in the NFL, it's kind of hard to put a priority on that. It's kind of hard to put a price tag that's, that the players are, are worth some of these astronomical prices that some of these other positions get when you literally have starting level quality, starting level running quarterbacks, I mean running backs coming into the NFL every single draft now. Like look at where we got Roshan Johnson at. And if he does develop into a starting level running back, just look at that. Hell, look where we got Khalil Herbert at, right? So when you're able to get that type of quality that deep into the draft, that frequently as well. It's kind of the perfect storm for that position to not get paid, unfortunately. We'll see if it turns around, man. But that's it. That's the time for today. Make sure you guys are following the show at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, chicagobearcentral.gmail.com. Lastly, you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag episodes. The number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related because of you guys. And like I like to end every episode on Shy Town up, bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break, 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 break.